Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on pila globosa. In this presentation, we'll be looking into the nervous system of pila. Pila, it leads an active life both on in water and on land. And as an adaptation to its active life, it has a complex and highly developed nervous system. Uh, it also possesses much specialized sensor organs. Its nervous system, it is unique in having uh, like two important uh, features. That is one is it is its asymmetrical nature. Uh, nervous system, it is asymmetrical and it is also somewhat spirally twisted because of the torsion. Secondly, it's ganglia. Uh, they are mostly concentrated in the anterior region of the body, anterior towards the anterior region of the body. And these ganglia, they are interconnected by uh, like co connectives and commissures and hence it forms a nerve ring around the uh, buccal mass. It is known as a somatogastric nerve ring. Okay, so this is what they are referring to the somatogastric nerve ring. Clear? So this is about the unique feature of the nervous system. So in the nervous system, it is complex, it is uh, advanced and uh, um, what do you call it is composed of ganglia and interconnecting commissures and connectives. Okay. And these um, um, are more focused onto the anterior part of the body. And uh, we can see that the ganglia and the uh, commissures and connectives around the buccal mass, it forms a somatogastric nerve ring. Fine. Coming to the uh, different components of the nervous system. The nervous system of pila it consists of uh, as already mentioned ganglia commissures and connectives uh, interconnecting the ganglia and also nerves arising from the these ganglia okay so we'll see in uh, into each in detail so the first of all ganglia now what is a ganglion ganglion it is just aggregation of nerve cells aggregation of nerve cells give rise to a nervous tissue which is referred as a ganglion okay and there are about nine uh, ganglia in the case of pila unpaired as well as paired ones are found okay the first one starting from the anterior most we have is a cerebral ganglia okay just one minute we can take just one minute. Okay. yeah so this is the uh, cerebral ganglia okay these two are the cerebral ganglia the right and the left cerebral ganglia and uh, uh, they are situated anteriorly uh, anterior to the buccal mass actually uh, along the dorsolateral side. So you can see here anterior to the buccal mass along the dorsolateral side. The second one on the course is the buccal ganglia, these two. Okay, so here this is the um, what you call the cerebral ganglia, right? And then we have is the buccal ganglia. They are smaller as compared with the uh, cerebral ganglia, it is, uh, they are smaller. Again, they are paired. So two, the left and the right buccal ganglia. Small, they are triangular ganglia, which are which are found located dorsolaterally, uh, one on either side at the junction of the buccal mass and the esophagus. Okay, uh, and the third one we can see is again a paired one, pleuropedal ganglia. Okay, so this is the pleuropedal ganglia. Okay, here these two. Fine. So here you can see the left pleuropedal ganglionic mass and the right pleuropedal ganglionic mass okay now there is slight difference between these two the left pleuropedal ganglionic mass it is uh, formed of two ganglia that is pleural ganglia and the left pleural ganglia and left pedal ganglia okay this this part is actually the uh, what you call the pedal ganglia over here and the pleural ganglia it is over here okay these two ganglia they fuse together to form the pleuropedal ganglionic mass on the left side. While on the right side, what happens is it is slightly different. We can find right pedal ganglia, right pleural ganglia, and uh, infraintestinal ganglia that these three together fuse to form what is known as a ganglionic mass. Okay. Now the pleuropedal ganglia, they are somewhat triangular, a larger ganglionic mass present on uh, ventral ventrolateral sites okay ventrolateral sites of the buccal mass so you can see on the dorsolateral sites you can find the cerebral ganglia on the ventrolateral sites you can find the pedo pleuropedal ganglia okay so i hope it is clear we have left pleuropedal uh, ganglionic mass and 
the right pleuropedal ganglionic mass but the constitution it is slightly different because in the case of right pleuropedal ganglionic mass uh, apart from the pedal and the pleural ganglia we can find infra intestinal ganglia also fused together okay next we have is the supra intestinal it is single it's not paired it is just one okay this one is the uh, supra intestinal uh, ganglion a single unpaired one it is fusiform in nature almost spindle shaped it lies in a sinus behind the left pleuropedal ganglionic mass okay then we have is the visceral ganglia okay we can consider it as, it as a pair okay the visceral ganglia that is the last one on the course the uh, it could be considered as a paired ganglion or a single one the reason is uh, it is uh, somewhat like fused it it can be considered as a pair of ganglia which is located um, in the lower part of the visceral mass and they lie very close to each other uh, or even almost fused together and that is why it could be considered as a pair or it could be taken as a single ganglionic mass okay situated at the lower end of the visceral mass so this is about the ganglia you can see here uh, two cerebral ganglia uh, ganglia then two buccal ganglia two pleuropedal ganglia a single supra intestinal ganglion uh, two visceral ganglia or it could be one visceral ganglion whatever it is okay now the next one is a commissure okay commissure what is a commissure commissure it is a, uh, what you call uh, the nervous structure that uh, connects between two similar ganglia okay so the, it is a nervous structure that connects two similar ganglia okay we have four different commissures we can see the first one it is a cerebral commissure okay so this is the cerebral commissure here okay uh, what is said is that commissure is something which connects two similar uh, um, what you call nervous structures isn't it similar ganglionic mass so the cerebral commissure it connects two cerebral ganglia okay two cerebral ganglia uh, and uh, they lie dorsal to the buccal mass fine now the next one is the buccal commissure here you can see this buccal commissure it interconnects the two buccal ganglia okay uh, it's a fine nerve that interconnects the two buccal ganglia and it trans transfers on the ventral side of the esophagus okay this is the dorsal to the buccal mass and here it is ventral to the uh, what you call the uh, esophagus okay now next one is pedal commissures okay the pedal commissures actually they are two in number placed one above the other you can see here this is the pedal commissure okay one above the other so it, only one is visible but there are two they are thick nerve bands that connect you can see here the two pleuropedal ganglion actually the pedal ganglion or ganglia of the two pleuropedal ganglionic mass okay so this pedal commissure it interconnects the two pedal ganglion on either side fine so these are the four commissures that is one cerebral commissure one buccal commissure and two pedal commissures okay the next one we have is the connectives okay uh, connectives it is uh, they are the nervous tissues or the nervous structures uh, that connect two different ganglia okay commissure they are nerve, uh, nerves which connect two similar ganglia while connectives they are they interconnect two different ganglia okay in the um, pila nervous system you can find almost 11 different connectives okay uh, some are paired some are unpaired if the first one you can see is the cerebrobuccal connective okay what it, does it connect it connects the cerebral ganglia on its side with the buccal ganglion on its side okay so these two are the uh, what you call the cerebrobuccal connective okay the cerebrobuccal connective it is on either side connecting the cerebral ganglion with the buccal ganglion on its side okay the uh, next one is the cerebropleural ganglion okay uh, sorry yeah cerebropleural uh, ganglia uh, sorry what you call cerebropleural connective i'm sorry cerebropleural connective you can see here the cerebropleural connective it connects the cerebral ganglion with the pleural ganglion on its side okay the left cerebral ganglion is connected with the left pleural ganglion of the sorry what you call right uh, 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 cerebral ganglion it is connected with the right pleural uh, ganglion of the 
pleuropedal ganglionic mass of its side okay similarly here this one it is a left cerebro pleural connective cerebro pleural connective okay so two cerebro pleural connectives which interconnects the cerebral ganglion and the pleural ganglion of the pleuropedal ganglionic mass of its side okay then next we have is the cerebro pedal connective right it connect interconnects the cerebral ganglion with the pedal ganglion of the pleuropedal ganglionic mass of its side okay so you have this one clear okay so it interconnects cerebral ganglion with the uh, pleural ganglion of the pleuropedal ganglionic mass of the side fine so again we have two over there so total of six already now we have is the pleuro infra intestinal connective it is otherwise known as the infra intestinal oh sorry sorry infra intestinal nerve okay it is uh, it interconnects the pleural ganglion with the infra intestinal ganglion okay so you can see here this is the infra intestinal ganglion right so the pleural ganglion uh, of the uh, left pleuropedal mass is connected with the infra intestinal ganglion of the right pleuropedal mass okay the left pleural ganglion is connected to the right infra intestinal ganglion by way of the infra intestinal nerve or it is known as pleuro infra intestinal connective okay the next connect it is single just one okay it's not pair next one we have is the infra intestinal the visceral connective okay so this is a visceral ganglion and this is the infra intestinal ganglion so this one over here the longer one it is the infra intestinal visceral connective okay it is a infra intestinal visceral connective it connects the infra intestinal ganglion of the right pleuropedal ganglionic mass with the visceral ganglion of its side okay next we have is the uh, supra intestinal visceral connective okay this one it connects as the name suggests supra intestinal ganglion with the visceral ganglion is connected by uh, the supra intestinal uh, visceral connective again it is single in number okay all these are single in number next we have is a supra intestinal pleural connective which is otherwise known as supra intestinal nerve okay it interconnects supra intestinal uh, with the right pleural ganglion of the right pleuropedal ganglionic mass okay so supra intestinal nerve interconnects the supra intestinal ganglion with the uh, what you call right pleural ganglion okay so that is the supra intestinal pleural connective right and the last one of the connective it is the zygonuri okay zygonuri it uh, it is a nerve connection between the pleural part of the uh, left pleuropedal ganglion with the supra intestinal that is this one okay this is the zygonuri it interconnects the left pleural ganglion with the supra intestinal ganglion uh, on the to uh, along the left side okay so these are the 11 connectives fine that is one connecting the cerebral and the buccal then we have as a cerebral with the uh, <coughs> sorry <coughs> with the uh, yeah cerebral with the buccal then we have as a cerebral with the pedal then we have as a cerebral with the uh, pleural then we can see uh, between the uh, pleural and the infraintestinal right and supraintestinal and then pleural okay then we have is the supraintestinal and visceral and infraintestinal and visceral okay so these are the different connectives okay now we can see that from each of the ganglionic mass arises different uh, nerves that innervates different parts of the body okay from the 